What are you still doing here? I thought you were filming today. Oh no, I am. I've just been addicted to this game called Viking War of Clans. What's that? Well, now that you asked. Vikings is a totally free game that is similar to those awesome top strategy and RPG games from the 90s. You can pick your own playstyle, whether you want to build an epic city, raise an army to rule the world, or gather up a bunch of friends and just build a huge army and destroy castles. Play this game for 5 minutes and you'll see why 12 million players are addicted. Guys, by installing this game you'll not only help me to create good quality videos for you, but you'll definitely like Vikings as well. Support my channel, download Vikings from the link below, and get 200 gold and initial protection shield for free. That will give you a good head start. What I look? I look good, right? I different? I shaved the beard, I've been boxing a lot, I've been working out, I feel great, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, but I'm also gonna say, I did not expect boxing to be so hard. The cardio, I gotta literally push myself to the limits. It's insane. That KSI and Joe Weller boxing match is coming up in roughly 23 days, so I have to keep going. But besides all that, I have to also say who I'm gonna fight, because I told you in my last video, I'm gonna tell you who I'm gonna fight. This is who I'm fighting. This guy right here, Yusuf. A lot of you may know him as, you know, another urban explorer, or as the 24-hour challenge dude. Now, this ain't a beef fight. We have no drama with each other at all. We're not going to fake drama. It's just a friend-to-friend -friend fight. But none of us have ever, ever really boxed. I've never boxed in my life. I think he's done some sparring and some boxing before, so he has a bit of, maybe, of a head start. Oh, I hope I can win. <sighs> but anyways... That's coming up soon, and I'll be posting some videos of me training and stuff. I've been so busy in boxing and training that I haven't been able to actually post abandoned videos or even vlogs. While the whole Explorer crew is back here, they're all actually currently at Cody's house having fun and filming. I'm here actually training hard. But I wanted to get into something really quick. This video is actually a bit long, but it's actually really interesting. So last year... Actually, this might have been two years ago. Wait, let me see when this was filmed. Damn, never mind. Not even last year. This was filmed on December 16, 2015. And what happened was we had this idea that, you know, we want to go beyond YouTube, beyond this urban exploring aspect, the whole exploring crew. We wanted to take it to the TV. And so we made this video that you're about to see. It's 22 minutes long or 21 minutes long. We just wanted to see how could we, like, take this further than YouTube. How we want to be more professional, better edits, uh, give more history on this place, and, and make it a more educational but really fun video and the whole aspect of exploring in general. And make people like, oh, wow, this is so cool, you know? And so we made this video. And we've been pitching it to different companies back in the day, but and like we had good hits, but then we kind of just fell off, and we just wanted to do our own thing and travel the world more. But now it's 2018, and we actually are currently in the works of a TV show, but it's not certain because things can change, things can happen, you know, like maybe like the um, the contract's not good enough, or we don't agree with certain stuff, and then the whole show won't work. And I am trying to get this show on the road for 2018, which is yeah now 2018, new year, new me, baby. Anyways, so yeah, I always love to get out of my comfort zone, and I like to push, and I love to do new things. I like to try everything once, except drugs. So yeah, here's this video. I just want to show you it, get you guys an idea of what's going on. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Cody Buffington. And I'm exploring with Josh. I'm Joe. And today we're exploring this abandoned phosphate mine. It opened in 1906. And closed in 1995. Let's go do some urban exploring. Let's do it. Hey, what's up you guys? Today we are exploring an abandoned phosphate mine. One of the best things I love about urban exploring is the fact that you're going inside these old man-made structures, buildings, and and you don't know what you're going to see, what you're going to find. It's it's amazing that you're just reliving old history, coming back from its past. And it really has a special feeling. It is huge. If you look around, it's the biggest place I've ever been. We're going to go climbing up in this place. Uh, this is where the phosphate, which was used for fertilizer for agriculture, 
uh, in some places, they would uh, have this. This is where the phosphate would be processed, and it would come up here, and this is where it would be finished. And then down here, over on, uh, you can't see it yet, but there's a little place over there where it would be dropped into uh, the train carts, which you'll see the train cars over there. And that's where they would take it off to wherever they would ship it off. But yeah, just imagine how alive this place used to be. There used to be so many workers here. I mean, this is a big place to run and operate. What is quite fascinating is the fact that how can a structure have this many people that work here just fall into such disarray and close up? Even the steel that was once welded together here is just dangling in the wind. As years go by, you can tell nature takes back what's theirs. They have a bunch of trees and, and vines growing all over their structure's walls. So Cody, I hear you're about to climb this ladder right here. Yeah, I'm about to climb this ladder right here and get the ultimate view from up top. Oh man. I'm just kind of a little nervous. Yeah, man. <laughs> no. See, I have a fear of ladders. Yeah. So that's like... <laughs> wow. I hear your echo oh, from up yeah. there. Jesus. The wide angle lens doesn't really make it look that big, but that is a far drop. Whew. You tired yet up there? What? Are you tired up there? Yeah. <laughs> These are the stairs I just climbed up. I just climbed up this tower. I'm at the highest place you can get on this tower now. And this is my view of the whole compound. This is the whole mine from up here. And there's, there's hornets up here. <laughs> Josh and everyone decided to stay down there, but I figured I had to get the shot. This is definitely worth seeing. Phosphate mining dates back to the first hard rock deposits found in 1883. In the 1920s through today, dragline cranes are the prevalent method of mining, removing about 15 acres per month on average. Phosphate rock is usually found 15 to 50 feet beneath the ground in a mixture of phosphate pebbles, sand and clay, known as phosphate matrix. Next they deposit it into a shallow containment area or slurry pit. There, high pressure water guns turn the material into a watery mixture called slurry, which is sent through pipelines to a processing facility referred to as a benefication plant, where phosphate rock is physically separated from the sand and clay in the matrix. At the plant, the slurry is moved through a series of washing stations and vibrating screens that physically separate clay, sand, and pebble sized particles. Everything has been like run down. I'm assuming van vandals have came and probably uh, took whatever scrap they could out of this place, that's for sure. I'm sure this was used for something to, uh, some sort of lever to let the phosphate drop through. Oh yeah, you're right. Wow. That's, that's a bit used. That's ridiculous. Somebody sledgehammer that without the handle. This looks like the turbines that would spin the uh, phosphate and this would then get sent through those tubes over there to the next zone for processing. How do you, there, have, 
their workers' hats are still here. Now that's cool. What else is back here? Let's go, let's go, let's go check this out. Now I don't have much um, info in, 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 on phosphate and mines or anything, but I mean it's awesome to see stuff is still left here, including this cool wheel. And this is this is a hard steel, um, like those well pipes. Oh, sorry, that's something a valve on it. Yeah, a valve. As well as what do you think? Like scrap? We got scrap metal, nuts and bolts, and I'm sure to somebody all this working stuff was valuable. Yeah, definitely valuable. Always have that one worker that. Everything they need. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, they, they definitely organize it, that one worker. <laughs> I like that. So, this right here is the number one feeder switch, which would go in forward and reverse to spin this turbine right here. And that must be the number two feeder. It's just oh, so yeah. much, Tons it's just soda. caked on with dust from the oh, air. Seven Up Mountain Dew, Gatorade, Arizona. So here, here's, here's where the, you know, the lab would be, you know, the, the mastermind of all plants is inside there. And we can't go in through this way, it's obviously <laughs> locked. But from the other side, we probably could. <laughs> what do you think this stuff was, actually? Oh, look at this, look at this. These, these were lights. It's, I mean, if we oh, can remove all the phosphate okay. dust off, it would save. Oh, yeah, so this is a combustion fan. So this will tell you what's on, which fans are going. Scrubber airflow. Exhaust fan, exhaust fan. All just, they're all just fans. I'm assuming they always wanted to see them lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not turned off. Yeah. Wow. So right here, power on, purge complete, pilot on, main flame. Ooh. Purge start, pilot start. And the big button. The, the big button that you should emergency touch. Emergency stop. <laughs> Emerg I had to push it. <laughs> it's a button. Don't I touch to the button. It. Don't touch it. Big red button. <laughs> on the Titanic. Valves. Just floodgates open with yeah. the water. Yeah, we're just gonna get soaked in here now. <laughs> Pressure gauges all over the place. Gotta check that PSI. Might be a little dark in this like control room. This is pretty much where all the magic happened. This is where all the magic happened. This is uh all the on and off switches. All the uh, temperature valves, all the schematics. pressure gauges, wow, exhaust fans, dryers, everything. They just monitored it from in here. Monitor these pressure gauges all day. Whoever did this, Department of Envi Environmental Regulations, Polk County, 475 to 525 gallons per minute. Wow, that's, that's a, lot. a lot of water. It's, it's almost as if there was a, a worldwide emergency and everyone just had to up and leave. It's really destroyed and everything's just spread all over the floors. Dust is all over everything. You can't even really make out what, what's everything, what anything even says. You have to like touch it and move the old dust off. To put in three different keys for different things. It's it's probably like, really activated, huh? Yeah, so like... Three different people, maybe? <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, the manager or the, you know, the person who really yeah. ran it. Yeah, those are all for interlocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Three different interlocks. Yeah, yeah they only want five pounds. Blueprints. The old blueprints are right here. All the schematics and maps and... I don't know if this was hand-drawn. I know the, the old blueprints are all hand-drawn. Flame safety system. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this looks like an eye wash station. You get chemicals in your eyes. That's where they ran to. Yeah, fire extinguisher as well. And actually, the, it's a rubber hose. It's not even like a steel hose. You can tell this is old school. Yeah. <laughs> it just runs outside. <laughs> just flush the chemicals outside into the, the grass. Yep, right out to the grass. This wheelbarrow here, it's pretty useless now. It's just rotted and, but over here, I'll go down a few steps, but look at this. As I'm going down, it just turns to water. There's like a whole basement floor that's flooded. You can't get down there. It'll be so cool to see what was down there. 
Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. So Josh and I are going to go over in these uh, turbines right here. We're going to go inside them. You gotta watch your head in this place. Gonna get like a rusty uh, something in your head if you don't watch out. But we're going up the steps here, and uh, Josh is gonna show me how to get into this place right now. Yeah. How do we do this? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get my mask out of your backpack. That's for sure. How'd you guys get up there? Which way did you go? There's stairs behind us. Oh, <laughs> he made it. These sharp blades break up the clay in the sand, and as you'll see here, there's still some phosphate left at the bottom. This tube pours the minerals and phosphate into the turbine, and these jets shoot high pressure water. As you can see around me, these little things would be spinning in here. And if they were spinning right now, I'd be pretty dead. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like there's leftover phosphate all over the ground. This is a really cool turbine. It looks like the uh, pipe down there is where the, turb the uh, turbine would spit into phosphate and it would flow down here. Woo! These pipes take the slurry down into the floor and dump it on the conveyor belts, which then transports it to the beneficiation plant. So, we're going up the conveyor belt now. This is crazy. This is all flooded with water right here too. And yes. this is something right here. Yes, it is. Just watch your head. We're right on the ground floor level too. There's grass right here. All right. Can you stand on this? Yeah, you can yeah. stand on it. You go up to this point, then you're. Okay. So <laughs> we're heading up the conveyor belt here and it is steep. It's like going it's going up an uphill roller coaster. Watch out for that hill little cut, Cody. <laughs> Almost died. Almost died right there. For real. Alright. This camera's getting heavy too. Separate the phosphate. Watch out for the floor. Rock in the sand. <sighs> We just walked up that conveyor belt and we're in the beneficiation center now, which is a whole nother building. And basically it just separates the phosphate from the clay and the sand and all that. Whoa, is a roof of one of the plants. <laughs> so the hole in the wall. We're on the roof right now. There's a lot of plants growing. Right now we're on the roof currently of one of the centers and we have quite the view. Come check us out. The clay and sand completely getting all separated. All of it would be done through these conveyor belts. And the crazy thing is, all of it was stored down in here. It's a bit, very big drop. I'll get closer as we go. See so yeah, that drop? It's very dark, but all the phosphate was stored in these like dark containers, I guess. Well, this would control the belt motor and the travel motor right here. Scrap parts up here. Which is how it would run those. Big versions of minecarts that would go down this track right here. And at the end, there's a little spring that stops it and these things in the floor is where they would store it. The uh, side of the cart would open up and they would go down to these little uh, things. It's like a 35 foot drop down there. So we got all the uh, electrical wire and panels right here all cut. I'm assuming someone who worked here cut all these before they uh, close this place down because usually people don't cut wires. Probably did so no one could come back and get this place up and running. We're, we're heading over here to this place. We gotta walk down all these sketchy stairs now. And this is the last stage of the process where they would finalize the phosphate. So let's, let's head down these stairs. It is a little bit loose as, uh, as you go down. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, How you doing, Joe? Oh, I'm doing just great. <laughs> I just want to see alligators walking around, though. I really want to see an alligator while I'm here. You just want to see the terror on my face as I come down these awesome steps. <laughs> jump. Do a jump? Oh, no, just uh, walk I'm going to fall through if I do a jump. Oh, nice. see? Yeah. Now, this thing, like I said, can cave in any time. So just watch out. All right, all right. Found this, these steps that we just came down. If you notice this concrete, this is where the danger would come in. Not to mention some of the really loose pieces of steel, but actually falling rock, falling concrete. So the final stage, the phosphate comes up here into that long tower. Then it's gonna somehow, it scales all the way down and there'll be a cargo train right around here and it drops it in and we're gonna go get close to look at it. Here we have the cables that run up to the control booth. These are the drops which handled the phosphate as it was dumped down from five stories up. As you can see, the grass is quite overgrown, but you can still see the railroad tracks that used to run under the drops. So it looks like this is where the captain would sit and man the ship. And yeah. <laughs> all the stuff down here, he would just be pressing the buttons and operating it and telling the train when to go and all that. Oh uh, yeah. All from this captain's chair right here. Face mask right here. Oh wow, I never seen that last time. Yeah, look at that. Old phones and computers. What kind of computer is this? Oh, IBM. Oh, it's IBM. Dude, it's the IBM 200, no. <laughs> so here's actually where everything dropped, the phosphate stuff. And I had to duck because it's a very low ceiling with a pipe going right down the middle. As you can see here, comes up and down below to where we were underneath for the train. That's where it picked it all up at. This is where the other conveyor belt comes up and brings all the phosphate, brings it up here into there, and then it drops all the way down into the train cars. Some process. <clears throat> All right guys, so we're in the third building now. Uh, we just came from the Benefication Center and there's conveyor belts that go from each one, each building to each building. And so there's one right here that goes up and brings the phosphate up to its last destination. And before it hits the last destination, there's a big magnet and anything that didn't get taken away from the last two phases will definitely be taken away here with this magnet. That goes for diamond, gold, anything that could be related, anything metal pretty much, before it's then transferred down into the uh, cargo trains below. From the cargo train, it goes to its actual destination, wherever it might be, depending on you know, another country or its destination in the US. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed. All right, thanks for watching. The Nichols Mine was the largest phosphate plant in the country during its prime. The plant had an annual production capability of 1.4 million tons. At its peak, the plant employed over 500 workers. The entire phosphate industry has had many ups and downs, where many plants would do temporary layoffs. In 1980, the Florida phosphate industry peaked with around 14,600 people. When the plant finally did close for good, the company made an announcement that is typical. They said the decision to shut down the mine and terminate the employment of our people is a painful one. It was a decision dictated by conditions in the marketplace. They shut the plant down due to an industry-wide slump in sales caused by the U.S. farm crisis and by increased competition overseas. The irony is that the plant was shut down on July 4th, Independence Day. We spoke with a gentleman by the name of David Racina, whose father worked at the plant and still lives in the town near the plant. When he was a boy, he would complain to his father about the noise coming from the plant when he was trying to sleep. His father said to him he should not let the noise bother him. It's when he doesn't hear the noise is when he should be worried. <laughs> <laughs>